Welcome to day two of Cyboss 2023, where thousands of delegates have gathered to enjoy a week packed with expert insights and fascinating debates. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from yesterday, shall we? Starting with the opening keynote, which was given by Brian Moynihan, chair of the board and CEO of Bank of America. In the end of the day, you got to invest a lot in technology generally, but also in the payments technology because it is our protected turf. It is the reason we are here. It is the reason why we might be missed if we weren't here. And the question then is how do you invest in it? And so you got to invest in it to be you know, more secure, more informative to the customers, you know, uh, faster, simpler, lower cost. And we're on a relentless cost drive across all this. SWIFT CEO Javier Perez Tasso was joined on stage by Chair of the Board Graham Munro and Deputy Chair Samantha Emery. Just taking your mind back to 50 years ago, to 1973, thinking about why that group of stakeholders from different countries around the world came together. And it was in pursuit of solving common problems, common challenges, ultimately to build more inclusive and more sustainable economies. SWIFT has developed a series of newer capabilities over recent years. I think those are all targeted at how we improve the, the financial market infrastructure that, that we are working within. I think allowing SWIFT to pursue those capabilities further will be a super area for, for us to focus on. It's more important than ever that, uh, that we maintain that momentum and that we as a community focus in adopting and using all of these new capabilities, all of these new innovations that at the end are not only going to help to get to fast and frictionless transactions, but also secure and trusted. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, crucial. Elsewhere, some of the big challenges and opportunities facing the industry were discussed. We continue to see the advances of what high precision computation can do. We're seeing a whole new architecture around neural networks and what it means for data representation, and of course, given the advent of generative AIs. I think without a doubt, we're living in the most exciting time in computing since the 1940s. We have pockets of identifiers in each system, and each one of those identifiers is unique. And I, I think you can solve a problem in a part of it with the identifier of that system. But it's, it's not solving it here, and then having to figure out what the ramifications are of that in the downstream or the upstream systems to that. Uh, end users now, they see domestic payments uh, going real time. So the natural next step for them is to, to see cross-border as well going real time. Uh, all, all the frictions that uh, uh, domestic payment schemes in, in several countries managed to, to resolve, and now they are looking at seeing the same progress in, in cross-border payments. So I feel that volume-wise the instant payments will be more than 90% in the next five years. But if you really see value-wise, mm. it will still be less than 10% in the next five years. The big transactions, I mean, which have culminated over a period of, let's say, a big tender process after a discussion of 30 days, 45 days. I mean, why do you need 45 seconds for that payments to happen? The Inner Tribe stage was opened by comedian and mental health advocate Jessica Holmes. I know how hard everyone in this industry works. I know that there's burnout. I know that it's constantly evolving new information. But there's still room to laugh, and laughing makes us healthier. An industry session discussed what's needed to multiply the impact of the industry's ESG efforts. What my team and I do is we try to help raise capital for those solution providers in the clean tech space, the people who've really developing, you know, whether it's in the hydrogen space or carbon capture, long duration energy storage, those solutions that really need to be scaled so that the costs can come down, the individual costs, so that they can be deployed at scale by large, large organizations. We did a survey last year looking at small and medium-sized enterprises, which, by the way, make up like 98% of businesses in the world. They employ 70% of people. Um, and they're the ones that are saying, yes, I see the climate changing, I care, I want to be doing something, but I don't have a plan. And I don't know what that plan should look like. There's still plenty more to come at Cyboss today. Yes, lots to do, lots to learn, and lots to enjoy. Have a great day.